please rise for the church pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Jane Bowman. Here. Frank Myers. Here. Donna Roush. Here. Martha Patterson. Here. We have a quorum. And we have our agenda. Motion to approve the agenda for this evening. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So I second it. You have a first and a second. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 And for our last meeting, do we have any questions or renovations of the minutes from September 18th? And if not, we have a motion to approve of the minutes. I second that motion. And introduction of evidence by you need to have a vote. Mm -hmm. You need to call for a vote. Ah. Have we a vote to approve of the agenda? The minutes. The, of the minutes. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yes. I'd like to introduce into evidence the St. Genevieve Municipal Code, the design guidelines for the St. Genevieve National Register Historic District, the drawings and photographs and staff report that you have in your packets. I make a motion to approve the evidence as submitted. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I don't think we have any old business. Okay. And our new business. Uh, new business, uh, item number SGHC001-18 to receive a certificate of appropriateness to remodel the existing building for use as a new museum and learning center. No additions to the building's footprint, however a courtyard to be installed at 360 Market Street and demolition of the rear storage area is being requested at 364 Market Street. All the information is noted on the architectural drawings provided. Also I believe in the audience we have Steve Bacon, the architect for this project, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Who else do we have? Bob Wolf and the uh, uh, chairperson of the museum. Uh, Richie, we're with Becky. Dr. Becky, public relations. Okay. I don't know who that is. Oh, there's some building committee. Steve Yard, go up to the microphone and give the explanation of okay. what they're looking at. Thank you all for the uh, opportunity to to present these plans and uh, and talk them through with you, um, I hope you can tell from the from the drawings that the the goal of the project is to basically return the existing buildings to something much closer to their original condition than what they have been over the last forty or fifty years, uh, primarily by uh, taking off those. Uh, faux panels that were attached to the front all the way across the front of the building and actually covered up some of the window some of the original window areas um, the plans to to repurpose these buildings into the museum and learning center um, are oriented very much around keeping the building envelope as it as it was as as closely as we can uh, we're, we're trying to make minimal changes to the building itself, on the outside especially. Inside, we're removing lots of years of uh, 
uh, remodeling and uh, and just carving up the space. Uh, so it'll be basically two open volumes that will be available and, and excellent type space for the museum and learning center the way it's being envisioned right now. Um, obviously the committee's hope is to, is to have the building become a, a, a busy and a vibrant part of the downtown and also to blend in with, with uh, the character of the, of the other buildings or the historic nature of the, uh, of the more historic buildings in the area. But obviously there are some things that need to be done to any building to update it. We've tried to minimize those and uh, uh, hope that we've, we've, we've done that. Um, and I hope that the drawings and, and the, the images that we created pretty well explain that. Uh, there's probably no need for me to talk through every part of it, but uh, be more than happy to entertain questions. Or Bob, if there's anything you think I ought to be mentioning that I haven't. No, we just want to make that area, the uh, alleyway, that's an alley right now. We want to turn that into a courtyard and make it very accommodating to the downtown area. And then the buildings at 360, is it 360 market? The ones on the right-hand side? That's 364. 364. The, the one that used to be the clip joint. Those buildings are what we are calling phase two. <coughs> Uh, in the future, we want to redo those buildings and uh, have those part of that uh, patio area or the courtyard area, and they will support with different businesses, uh, different trades, uh, and we haven't actually talked to anybody about being in there yet, but our intent is to put other businesses in those, that row of buildings, so it's a vibrant area for the downtown area, draw people in and uh, be very accommodating to people, tourists in the area to come in and relax uh, and be in the courtyard. Okay, would you address the entrance and exit doors and the parking and the lighting, or the exterior lighting? Okay, um, as far as the exterior lighting, uh, our, our, our plans are calling for a row of gooseneck type fixtures that would be mounted about halfway up the building, shining down on the face of the building, lighting up uh, some signage that, that we hope to have across the front there and the, and the windows, uh, the, the large windows across the bottom first story. Um, at the upper level, um, there's, some, there's some very interesting wood cornice work across the top of that building, which actually exists on, on several buildings around town. And, and we thought it would be nice to highlight that in the, in the evening, especially with uh, the concentration on downlight everywhere. It's not very often that our attention gets drawn upward. So we're proposing these, these very low profile strip lights that would attach on the face of the, uh, of the brick. We would position those upward to highlight that cornice work at night. So in the evening when the lights are on, you would have the, the uh, downlight fixtures lighting up the walk in the front of the first floor building on the out of the of the building on the outside and then these up lights at the cornice that would highlight that um, the fixtures the up light fixtures for uh, for the cornice are very small I think they're they're less than two inches in both dimensions in I mean that's their thickness and then they run in a strip they're that size they should be very uh, very unnoticeable once in place except for the light that they're going to be providing. Um, the, uh, the, the whole idea of the courtyard kind of emerged from, from thinking about how people were going to be coming into and using the Museum and Learning Center once it was fully developed. Um, there's, there's parking that exists to the rear of the building and there's obviously lots of street parking out on the square and Market Street from that area. So it's likely that people were going to be coming from, from both areas, particularly if you had a bus from a school or something that would probably be parking at the back. Uh, we wanted to have an entrance that would be better situated to serve people regardless of which parking location they had chosen. So that's, that's when we started to think about the alley as something more than an alley, which is what it's been for, for a long, long time. 
uh, and start to think of it as part of the entry experience into, into the museum. Now, obviously, as a part of an experience, we couldn't leave it paved and <laughs> the way it was, so, so we started thinking about things to do to enhance the area, and that's when we developed the idea of, of, uh, of lowering the grade so that it matches what will be the new finished floor of the museum, of the first floor, and, um, and connecting that with steps and also with a ramp that would be in place permanently so that if you were coming from the rear, from the parking at the rear, you could come into the court, courtyard either down the steps or down the ramp that's going to run alongside the, the buildings at, at 364. Um, but once, once we started to think of the courtyard as, you know, as part of the experience and understand that people were going to be coming, we hope, from both directions, uh, that's what led us to, to talk about putting that door on the side of the building rather than having it face the front of the street, which we know is different from the original setup, but, um, but by maintaining or going back to what is close to the original window configuration on the street, we felt that might offset the idea that the door is no longer on Market Street. So you would be taking up all the old blacktop there and lowering the surface of the... Right, to, to, right exactly. From, from the level approximately where the sidewalk is at, on Market Street, it would be very nearly level all the way back almost to where the, that 1980s addition starts at the back of those buildings. Uh, and, and, and in that area is where the steps and the ramp would begin. So you'd have basically a level courtyard from, from that portion. After, after coming from the back parking lot down the steps, you'd be on a level surface all the way out to the, and it would connect to the sidewalk on Market Street. Do you have planned lighting for the courtyard at night? Uh, we haven't developed that very far, no. Uh, there will be some. It's intended to be used after hours. And um, I, would, I would expect that we would probably try to continue something along the lines of what we have along the front of the building with some historic looking antique or historic looking down lights that would light the area up. Um, it would probably also end up requiring some uh, some lower wall mounted fixtures that give off a little more light than these more ambient fixtures would yes absolutely it's in, it's intended to be lit and usable beyond sunset so yeah we will be providing lighting in 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 there I saw in your proposal that you were looking for bollards that had lighting within for down mm -hmm. surface. There's, there's, there's all kinds of bollards once you start looking at them. Um, there are, uh, there are bollards that are strictly for, that are, that are high security type that will prevent the intrusion of a vehicle. There are some that are really just more decorative and a lot of those decorative ones have uh, lighting fixtures built into them and they're really better just for psychologically defining two different areas from from one another they don't do much to resist vandalism or uh, or a, a vehicle that might run into them um, there are bollards that that are intended to be there provide some security but that are also removable at some point if you need them to be and because some of the displays moving in and out of the museum might need that extra space uh, one or two of those bollards probably need to be looked at uh, in that way so that they can be removable. Um, the issue, the, the reason I can't say exactly which ones we're using yet is that we haven't decided exactly what purposes those bollards need to serve and the lighted bollards and the security, the super security type bollards are not, there's very little crossover. So, so um, what we were trying to do, or what I was trying to do, was identify uh, a couple of different types of bollards that would still have maybe the right character, but then once we decide on what the actual purpose of those bollards is, we might have to go, you know, to maybe we can't, we can't commit to one of the bollards right now, I guess is what I'm saying. 
but it's a it's a function of deciding exactly what we want them to do uh, before we can decide exactly which way to go <clears throat> since that has been a alleyway for so long it might be good to have something that would provide a little security for someone driving through yes I I, I, I agree with that now hopefully the big signs that we're that we're proposing to put as as markers and entryways to the to the courtyard on both sides will be a clue to people that that it's that the usage has changed some but you're right there will be people who out of habit will for some time assume that they're going to be able to drive through there you could inexpensively avoid that problem you could just uh, take the sidewalk and put a curb along it the same as the street that's that's true if that if yeah i'm sure the street is or the uh, uh there's a, a cut in the sidewalk to yes. allow people to drive across that and to meet the, the street smoothly and if that were to be reconstructed more like sidewalk everywhere else with a six inch curb that would be a that would be a help but if you ever have to remove the bollards to bring something in and if it's fragile you don't want a truck jumping over that no and handicap accessible yes <clears throat> i assume that's what that ramp in the back is going to help with on, on the subject of the alley, I have a question. Does the ownership of the alley, is that normally alleys are city property? Is that uh, going to have to go through some stuff then, I guess, to vacate that alley to allow them to do that? Or how do we how do we do that, Mark? Actually, I don't think that alley, that alley is, not, is not. No. It's, it's not? Really. Okay. It's part of the property. It is. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, then that simplifies that alley. <laughs> No, I think it's good that that subject of the Ballards is brought up because with the entrances you have to the building, with the emergency entrance on the front and the entry for the mm -hmm. tourists in the middle there, mm -hmm. it changed your display <coughs> to be brought into the building or any maintenance could be very awkward unless some small number of them are removable so that you can bring a vehicle in right mm -hmm. but it, yeah that that's one of the challenges of working with an existing building and trying to minimize the uh, what you do to it um, we probably wouldn't lay it out exactly this way if we were starting from scratch but but based on the things uh, you know the the resources that we have and and how everything sets we think we're we think we're doing doing the getting the most out of everything are you going to retain the old heading sign on front I don't know that there's been a final decision on that um, uh, one of the things that uh, that I've heard suggested as a possibility is uh, including it in displays with with some some of the other memorabilia from the town maybe that would be in the courtyard or maybe it would be in a display somewhere inside um, I don't know that that's certainly been decided and nobody's given me the authority to to make that decision uh, it has been discussed to move it to the courtyard area mm -hmm. and use that as part of the lighting for the courtyard uh, we would like to retain it yes uh, we just probably do not want to retain it in the front of the building or our curator he's not excited about having that heading it's also <laughs> inconsistent with our sign ordinance mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that would be good in the, in the courtyard area mm -hmm. it would be it would be a focal point and, and uh, we have building stone added their addition on the back of the building uh, we've measured it would it would fit there and it could very well be the focal point from um, the, the parking area behind not to mention we had quite a bit of excitement once we lit it up <laughs> people calling and uh, commenting how much they enjoyed to see that sign lit up so and uh, on your proposal the courtyard pavers 
Uh, we're looking to use limestone blocks, basically. Um, that's we, we'd like to use a natural stone. Um, obviously, costs are going to be a consideration in 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 all of this. Um, so what we what we hope to do is find a find a stone that that would be appropriate for use as a as a walk surface, hopefully locally to try and reinforce the um, you know the, uh, the the ties to the area with the project. Um, I I think I could say that it's possible that down the line, if budget if the budget became a concern, we might want to switch to a, maybe a less expensive paver, uh, maybe something that was manufactured and, and uh, simpler to, to acquire. Um, but what I was trying to, to get across in our description is that I think the, the pattern of stones would be the same either way. I think we'd like to stick with uh, rectangular stones that fit together closely, have small grout joints uh, rather than natural stone of irregular shapes and some places having large grout joints. It's just better for uh, long-term maintenance and, and uh, viability of, of the surfacing to do it that way. Um, so I don't know to what level we're committing to using local stone. That's the direction that we'd like to go, but the uh, rectilinear paver of various sizes in a kind of a, a random type pattern, I think is, is what we would like to see, to be seen visually, whatever the actual material ended up being. Have you considered the name bricks, where families or people do memorial bricks? That would also bring in money for the museum. Yes, it would. And I've seen that done to, to real good effect. I've seen it in several mm -hmm. places. Um, I don't know. I think I, I I don't know if that's been considered or not. I haven't been in on any of those discussions with with any of the committee. But considered, but not in that courtyard area, possibly. Considered in a different area, but that doesn't mean that we wouldn't entertain that. It just hasn't been discussed at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not to say if we ended up with stone of some type that that couldn't be engraved in the same way, uh, as opposed to to bricks. Um, I think b because it's a larger area, I was hoping to see a larger, larger units in there rather than anything that's that's too small. That just seemed like it could be. Well, depending on the pattern that you would want to use. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think there's some possibility for that. Um, I think it's great. I just think it's beautiful. Do we have any further questions or comments? My only comment is, Rick, thank you for coming in with so much detail. It's quite unusual for deliberation. <laughs> well, we well, have it on the back of a napkin. But we have those. We've seen those people who came in writing it up. Thank, thank, thank you for that. But you know, a project of this scope, you really, you know, I, I feel you really do need to develop it much further to to know that you're getting everything covered. And and obviously, we still even aren't to that point. But but uh, but I do feel that we have a pretty good grasp of what's going to happen, and that it's certainly possible in that space. So, do we have to approve the windows on the front? Mm -hmm. It doesn't say anything. About well, that, it's, but it's the whole. This phase is. Well, yeah, it just the whole phase. Oh, and I wanted to ask. I've noticed that under the windows in the front, where you're taking off the old ceramic tiles, there's some damage to the underlying wood, and I was wondering what you were going to do. You down yeah, where, where you can see damaged wood in those window openings, that is uh, either from old original window construction or infill over the years when they changed windows, changed the patterns, and, and put in different windows. So 
what our plan is to go back to the to the original opening which if you go down there and look at it it starts at floor level um, and on the outside of the building there's a steel angle that comes out down the face of the building and returns back level that's the bottom of the opening and then I think it's 12 feet up is the top of the opening we're going to be tearing out everything from floor level up to 12 foot uh, to the top of the window opening and, and everything side to side and replacing all of that with with new construction um, we didn't talk about it, but we're proposing some, some solid panels at the bottom, down low, that are more prone to kicking and damage and things. And I think maybe uh, those come up two feet from the floor, and then above that would be glass, uh, a couple sections of glass going on up to, to the top of the opening. Or would the metal that's in the sides, particularly the old windows, would that remain? It's visible now? The attached panels. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think everything that you can see of the windows now is is the replacement windows. Are you talking about the, the, the aluminum frames. Well, oh no, this, well, there's, okay. okay there are steel there. columns between yeah. the window yes. sections. Yes, and yes, those in fact uh, we didn't talk about it, but. Uh, uh, we plan to re-expose those, clean them up, paint them, and if, if you can, I don't know if it shows on the, the original picture that we've attached, but they, they had the name of the theater painted on those columns in a vertical fashion, and so we're proposing to do something like that with lettering identifying the Museum Learning Center on those re-exposed columns. But yes, we're, yes, we're going to maintain those in place and put our windows in around them. The federal standards on that pretty much call for you to do that and, and uh, be, well to, federal standards or not it'd I be a shame not to I think standard. yeah I agree well there's a few other buildings in the downtown area that have the cast fronts and mm -hmm. I know there's groups that go all over the country just to find these cast fronts just to tour them so good I well there will be one going. more for them to, to look at uh, Formulate a motion. I make a motion that we approve. I'll second it. Do you mean any more specific language or just approve as proposed? As is. That's up to you. That's up to you. Did that work? I make a motion that we approve it as is. And I second it. Where are we? All right. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. We look forward to getting it going too. Yeah. <laughs> so the administrative approvals was a Demolition of a shed at 174 South 5th Street. Um, the KC Hall wanted to replace the decayed wood columns with replacement wood columns. And uh, then 323 Seraphin Street needed to replace their storm windows, and so they replaced them aluminum storms for aluminum storms. I guess I was just surprised to see demolish a shed. Like, I guess it wasn't as historic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is in the historic district, but it was not a contributing structure. Yeah, it was a added on with tin and different window opening and everything else. And yeah. okay. And, that is all there. and do we have any other business? We have a motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Second what? Mm -hmm. And I move. Your name.